I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. A lot of you, when you're looking at moving to Nicaragua, are wondering, for those of you who are looking at making a long-term stay, you are wondering what you should do about a long-term apartment. How do you make it affordable when short-term rentals are so expensive, but investing in furniture and stuff seems like a lot to do when you don't know how long you're going to be staying. So I'm going to run through some of these numbers and talk about the logic of how and why this works right after the bump. So a little bit about rentals here in Nicaragua. Pretty typically, if you're going to be getting what is termed a long-term rental, these are generally unfurnished, and sign a lease, and this is for people who are living in Nicaragua, right? You're generally gonna be six or 12 months or longer. You can request a two-year, three-year, and so forth, but six is normally the shortest period and that most people are gonna to try to get a 12-month lease. When you're doing this, of course, you're worried about furniture and things like that, so a lot of people who are not making a permanent move, or you, maybe you're moving permanently to Nicaragua, but you're not sure about permanently moving to the exact place that you're going to be in. You're not looking to rent for a long time. Maybe you're just putting in some time hunting for a permanent home or, or a different apartment and you have to start somewhere, of course, but you don't want to be in a hotel anymore. So you're making that decision. So, so you want something that's furnished typically because you don't want to have to run out and buy a bunch of stuff just uh, to, to try things out for a little bit of time. So I want to talk a little bit about the numbers here because I think they may be a little bit surprising. And we've covered a lot of this in other episodes, but in uh, looking at different aspects of this relationship of apartments and long-term and short-term and furniture and, and unfurnished and so forth. Uh, so I wanted to distill this into a very specific discussion about this exact topic. So let's dig in. So first understanding, if you're going to get for a long-term apartment, you're going to have to be a absolute minimum of six months, which makes sense. Sense, otherwise it wouldn't really be long term. Short term rentals typically are going to be furnished. They're going to cost a ton more. As an example, an apartment that I know, right? That's that's a very nice apartment. I like it a lot. Unfurnished on a long term agreement is 180 a month. That doesn't include anything, right? You still pay for all your own utilities. You provide absolutely everything. And here in Nicaragua, you provide your fridge, you provide your range for cooking, you provide all those little appliance things, right? Now, anything that's attached to the house, you know, the, the shower head, the sinks, those things are included, but anything that isn't attached, anything that's electric, you've got to provide that normally. So if you're getting a long-term rental, the assumption is that's what it's going to be like. It's going to come with absolutely nothing. That same apartment, once you've added internet, uh, that's, you know, really good fast internet and air conditioning units and uh, water supply and all the appliances like uh, washing machine and refrigerator and uh, oven and range top and television and those kinds of things, beds and so forth, you're looking at about $500 a month, quite a bit more than the rent, more than double the rent uh, to move into a fully furnished place. Now, that's not on a six month or 12 month lease. That's on a one month lease, right? So it's, it's a very different animal in many ways. And if you are only coming into the country for one to say five months, you're probably going to want to simply do that. And that's a very good price compared to anywhere else. Try moving into some apartment in the United States that's in a good neighborhood that has a decent amount of space that is fully furnished with all the things and includes your internet and stuff for under $500 a month, you're not going to be able to, right? And most of the cost of that here in Nicaragua, we've broken this down on other episodes, comes from those appliances and how easy it is uh, to have damage and so forth. And a lot of those uh, appliances, like a refrigerator, here's about the same cost as a refrigerator in, say, the United States. So when you're looking at those costs, if you're renting that stuff, it's going to be just as expensive here as it is in the US, it can't be different. There's just no, there's no economics to make it any different from that. So, so those numbers often catch people by surprise when they think, well, the apartment is so much cheaper. Why is a furnished not, it's still way cheaper, but why is it so much more? It's because those components that get added to a furnished apartment don't have the local discounts uh, in really any way whatsoever. Almost every single thing that you're going to have is basically the exact same price. Once in a while, a little bit more, once in a while, a little bit less than buying the same thing in, say, the U.S. or Canada. So there's just no uh, uh, cost savings to those pieces here, but they are where the risk are, right? So that's the, those prices just don't move. And things like internet, yeah, it's going to be a few dollars cheaper here, but really close, right? In percentages, uh, the rent here as a percentage is a fraction of the rent of an unfurnished place in the United States. A place that's 180 here would easily be 800 to 1,000 in lower cost regions of the United States. 
United States. Uh, so that's, you know, five, roughly five times, uh, 500% the price, but an appliance is basically one to one. Internet, maybe 80% of the price here. At best, it's going to be as low as 50%, but that's nothing compared to 20%. So, uh, uh, so that's where you're going to see the actual rent is where you see the big discounts. Oh, our sun went away for a moment. Okay. So that, that explains why that is. Now, if you're going to be getting up to six months, generally at six months, you're probably going to make that flip. Or if you're getting really close to six months, and of course, what you want to do with your life will determine some of this. But if you're getting close to that six months, you probably want to, if money is what matters, right? If you have loads of money and none of this matters, you're not trying to, you know, cut corners. You're not trying to, to save uh, every last couple hundred dollars, then it probably doesn't matter. Do whatever is, is convenient for you. But if you're, you're in that uh, purely fine financial tipping point, somewhere around six months, you're going to get such an unbelievable savings on your rent. So we'll use the example I gave. Uh, now we'll, we'll round some numbers. We'll, we'll say you're saving $300 per month over a six month period. That's $1,800. Most of the appliances that you will use during a period of six months, because you don't want to go wild. You don't have to buy all kinds of things. You can probably get by with, with some limited uh, items. You're not going to get a huge TV or whatever. You may not even get a TV. You may not even, you may go for a really small apartment and just not furnish very much. Some people do that. Anyway, so if you play with these numbers pretty quickly, you'll say, okay, it's saving $300 per month. That's $1,800 over the course of the six months. I could buy all of the things that I need uh, in order to live during that time and make things just easier. Then I own it. Then uh, at the end of that period, if you decide you're leaving Nicaragua completely, you can sell those items. Of course, you're not going to get 100% of your money back. You may not even get 50% of your money back, but if you get anywhere close to 25 to 50% of your money back, then you've made out really well. You'll have saved quite a bit of money and have been able to pick out your appliances. Quite often, if you're getting things from a place that's already furnished, they're putting in old appliances. Sometimes they're problematic, uh, not very efficient and Often, if it's like furniture, often not very comfortable or a style you wouldn't want. So there's some value to buying your own. There's also effort that goes into that. So consider those things. But if it comes down to just money, then typically that's going to matter. Now, that's just at six months. You really can't go less than six months to get that uh, additional price benefit. So um, if, you're, if you're only staying for about five months, you're, you would either have to pay for a sixth month of, of rental to even have the ability to get that contract on the apartment. And that's going to just throw off your numbers. Instead of saving 1800 it's going to be more like saving 1200 and suddenly it you might be able to break even, but it's not going to be worth the, any effort at all. Uh, but the important thing is, what if either you decide to go beyond six months, you get to the end of your six months, you say, hey, I'd like to extend to that seventh month, or maybe another six months, or maybe stay for a long time. Well, suddenly that investment becomes really, really valuable. Then at the next six months, you're saving $300 every single month. It's not to offset the purchase of appliances. You've already covered that cost. So if you were going to make that a 12-month lease, then that uh, uh, that, that cost savings every month will be massive. You'll be saving a lot. And then, of course, there's another step. Of course, you can always sell them at the end, right? If you ever decide to leave and you don't need them anymore, you can save, sell them and recoup some of the money. Or just give them away and feel good about yourself that you've given back to the economy. That's fine, too. It doesn't help you on a financial balance sheet, but it does help you with that mental space of, did I do good with my money? And, and was I, you know, it was it a good expenditure? So that works out, too. Now, if you are going to be looking at uh, the possibility of staying in Nicaragua, but you decide, oh, but I don't want to stay in this apartment. I'm going to move on to this other place. Maybe you did this here in Leon, and after six months, you say, well, I would like to move on and go check out Matagalpa, a common thing for people to do here. Okay, great. So you're going to move to Matagalpa. Well, here, moving trucks, especially for a small number of appliances, don't buy tons of stuff. Buy small, reasonable things in most cases. They will fit on a single truck, and they will drive them for generally under $100. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, figure 200 In many cases, less than 100 They will drive them nearly anywhere in the country. So it's really common for people to have all their stuff loaded on a truck and just move to a new apartment all in one day. I mean, we do the same thing in the United States, but we tend to own so much more stuff. It's hard to get movers. You're not generally hiring a truck. You're doing it yourself. It becomes really complicated. But here it's generally really easy to hire a moving crew that will move you super inexpensively, very quickly, uh, and, and anywhere in the country, not just around your own city. So whether you're moving to just a different house or apartment in the same city or way across the country to explore a different region, you can take all your stuff with you. So whether it's six months in 
one place or six months in one and six months in another. I meant 12 months in one, six months in six months, or you decide to stay in the country, but you want to bounce around for a long period of time. That stuff adds up. It will save you a ton of money and allow you to have exactly the appliances that you want, not the ones that other people decided to leave behind or thought were the absolute cheapest things that they could get away with, which is generally what you end up with in that kind of rental. Of course, there are like luxury rentals out there, but then you're spending way more money in every aspect. So it's kind of a different animal. You're not really worried about making this calculation of, uh, do I get my absolute best value by doing it one way or another? But this is something that, especially as Americans, is very foreign to us. Uh, the idea that, one, your your uh, apartment will come absolutely bare without even a refrigerator, those are things that catch us by surprise, and we're not used to what unfurnished means here. So when we're comparing a completely bare-bones apartment in the U.S. and a completely bare-bones one here, the one here is quite a bit more bare. Uh, it's more just bones and a little bit less meat on it. Uh, so the price is being super low is slightly misleading. It's still incredible incredibly low, but it's a little bit misleading. But the ability to add those uh, furnishings ourselves very inexpensively and to take them with us and move them around very easily and that people do every day is quite a bit different. In the US, if you had to move a refrigerator, you'd be appalled. You'd be like, I, I, what? I can't. I'm, I, I'm not prepared to do that. And here, people do it every day without thinking twice. So some of those things change a little bit. Of course, you can do that in the United States. People just don't. But the, the whole concept of running those financials and saying, oh, all of the furnishings are so inexpensive uh, compared to renting and getting something furnished that I can just buy them instead, that it just won't occur to most people. In this case, this isn't really outside the box thinking, it's just adapting to thinking from a different cultural perspective. Here in Nicaragua, people would immediately jump to, of course you buy all your appliances, only rich people can rent them or really special circumstances. But to Americans, it's completely flipped. It seems crazy to buy all that stuff for a place you're renting and then try to move it with you. We just have different economics that whichever one you grow up with feels completely normal, but a Nicaraguan who's moving to the United States would be equally shocked to find that the idea of buying all those things every single uh, uh, for every single person, like that would just be the accepted thing to do, um, that it's not would completely shock them as well. So this is really just an adapting to local processes and thinking and saying, oh, this is how Nicaraguans do this. And it works really well. Uh, the one time that it is really unfortunate, and this is, we've mentioned this before, the thing that's so difficult here in Nicaragua and for just economic factors that none of us can actually change is that short-term rentals are a real challenge. There's very very few on the market, uh, having them furnished in a way that you would want is, is re relatively difficult, especially because if they're furnished the way that a North American would want, chances are it's not going to be practical for a Nicaraguan. They have different needs. They cook with different um, uh, appliances and such. They use different amounts of, of refrigerators and uh, North Americans have a tendency to be very, um, I have a squirrel directly over my head uh, who sometimes drops these really large fruit. Hold on. We're just going to go back and get one and show this. These are hard as a rock, right? And they're quite large. They're about the size of a softball. And uh, they're about hard as a baseball and the size of a softball. And uh, the squirrel knows that it can knock these off the tree and it'll get over top of me or the dogs and it'll actually drop them on you. If it hits you in the head, it's gonna hurt a lot. It's actually maybe closer to a, a bowling ball than it is to a baseball. So you have to be really careful. We're always worried about the dogs being hit with them. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, the uh, uh, the entire approach here um, is completely different. With that short term, it's such a challenge because there there just aren't people who want to take a risk on the lease because damage is a bigger problem here in the U.S. The uh, ability to do outrageous amounts of damage compared to the cost of a lease and the ability to track someone and catch them if they did damage is much better. Here, the, the person who is renting the apartment is at a disadvantage a bit, and it's just much more difficult. And the ability to do a lot of physical damage uh, to an apartment compared to the amount of rent. For example, if you did a whole, you trashed a place and, and maybe it did $5,000 of damage in the U.S. And the, and the same thing would be $3,000 of damage here in Nicaragua. But in the U.S., $5,000 damage on $1,000 a month of rent here on, on $300 of rent is a mathematically very different thing. And it's much harder to protect against and recoup uh, any damage here. One really bad renter could cause the loss of a decade of uh, rental income on an apartment that's unlikely to happen in the U.S. So just internal insurance and hedging mechanisms are completely different. And with the ratios of cost where appliances and such are just a minimal, are 
small portion of, of an apartment cost in the United States and the majority of the cost of an apartment here, at least over the course of one year or so in Nicaragua, everything is just thrown out the window. So Nicaragua has this really big challenge of what to do for short-term rentals short of just paying prices that are surprisingly closer to American prices than you would think. It's still probably half or you know, between a quarter and a half the cost of doing so in the US rather than 10 to 20%, but that still catches people by surprise. And if you're on an extreme budget trying to save as heavily as you can, that's not what you're looking for, right? That's gonna be not ideal. So that's unfortunate that we can't get that short-term furnished rental market a lot lower, but we just we just can't, not reasonably uh, at this time until some major you know shifts in uh, culture or, or pricing models or, or cost of goods change. But those aren't things that are likely to change. How would, if we could get uh, appliances so much cheaper than the US, then the US would find a way to get those same appliances at a cheaper price, right? Like we're just all getting them at the same price because none of us make any of them. Uh, uh, but then once you once you learn, once you get into that, Nicaragua, I'm going to be here for at least six months and, and hopefully uh, even a year minimum, then you can make this completely different decision right at the beginning and save all this money long term and, and own all your own things, uh, and which is really nice. Getting to pick out the TV that you want, getting to pick out the refrigerator that you want. And of course, if you're going to be moving within the region, yes, moving a refrigerator would be very difficult. If you're, Let's say you, you were going to put in a year in Nicaragua and then you're going to move to, let's say, Guatemala, which is not that far away, or, or even easier El Salvador. And you said, okay, well, my refrigerator, I'm going to use that for my year in Nicaragua. But at the end of that, I'm going to sell it. I, I bought it for a thousand. Hopefully I can get 500 out of it, but really paying $500 for a year of a refrigerator is pretty good. Uh, and, and it's one of your, it's your, by far your biggest uh, appliance purchase under normal circumstances. But let's say you get a TV and not a crazy one, but one that is practical and you have a vehicle of some sort, right? Now this is a lot of ifs, just an example. Let's say you end up with a car and you have a, a television and you decide you're going to drive to El Salvador to put in a year in El Salvador while you check that out. Maybe after that a year, in Guatemala. Well, you may be able to take a lot of your things with you. Uh, things that we have in our own apartment that you build a microwave, toaster oven, range top, television, uh, some of the like stands and stuff, depending on the size of your vehicle, uh, small tables, all kinds of little things, bedding, probably not the beds, but those are relatively easy to replace. And again, you can sell them uh, when you leave. I you're not going to get, uh, you know, 90% out of them, but 50% is reasonable. And then you only have to buy minimal things when you get to your next country, and it'll be a little bit better than the, than the year before. It's not going to be, you know, the same as staying in one country, but you have lots of mitigating factors by which you can potentially, because you own the items, reduce the overall cost as you uh, rent from either place to place or country to country. A little bit of uh, creative thinking, a little bit of just approaching things in a more looking at the total financial picture and not ruling things out because that's not how we do it in North America. Yeah, it is true. In North America, all these things would seem really silly. And people will say, why did you even consider that? Of course, that's not financially viable, they'd generally be right. But when you're looking at the same thing here uh, in Central America, quite often it'll be like, why would you consider anything else? This is the obvious thing. So don't rule those things out because you wouldn't do it at home here, it probably makes sense. Anyway, I just wanted to run those numbers because people are all, every so often, uh, people are asking, how do I deal with these things? Why is it the way that it is? How should I be thinking about it? And in general, it should be if you are really unsure and you're just doing a fact-finding mission and you, you don't have a really strong reason to believe that you'll be staying consistently over six months at a single shot. And I do want to mention, if you will be coming back and, and forth, you can put things into storage super cheaply. It'll be a little bit of effort to coordinate, but you could get really cheap storage for stuff like that and and if you're going to come live for six months and go back to the States for six months and come back and you're going to give up your apartment in between, then you can just use storage, which is so cheap, and have things brought to your apartment and put back into storage every six months. And while, again, a little bit of a pain, so much cheaper than renting a furnished place. Uh, that that's a, that's a really great way to go. Um, but uh, if you're coming down and you really think it's just for a little bit of time, just pay a little bit more, right? Either stay in a hotel, and if you want to save money over that, get a, a furnished apartment. Hard to find, but they're out there. And if you think you're going to be staying for at least six months, seriously consider just buying your furnishings and anything uh, that that 
errs on the side of you decide to stay longer will just be a slam dunk financially. And really, you'll be in such a good financial position because you don't have to pay for those things again. It may encourage you to give it a little bit more time. Well, I'm going to stay a little bit longer because I've already invested and covered my costs. Now I'm going to reap the benefits of that. Well, maybe I'll really enjoy having this extra, you know, $300 a month of theoretical money to play with because I've, I've been frugal during this time things to think about and ways to approach uh, renting or, or short-term living here in Nicaragua. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. I'll put the link above, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And of course, we have our membership, which I don't expect very many people to do, but for those really dedicated uh, people who want to give $5 a month as a recurring stable part of our income, you can hit that join button down there and you also get a super secret private group on Nika Abla for chatting with other members and getting rapid access to me. Uh, as always, uh, get down there, ask your questions, send in your video questions, that'd be fantastic. All of the contact information, how to send things in, all is in the show notes, and then just scroll down and you got all that conversation down there. If nothing else, just say hi, but questions, comments, all that, greatly appreciated, really does help the show. And of course, watch an extra episode after this, that stuff really helps, and I will see all of you tomorrow.